In a realm veiled in shadows, where the quest for justice is often silenced, a courageous few have emerged to illuminate the darkest corners of human rights violations in Pakistan. Within this captivating land of awe-inspiring beauty and profound traditions, hidden narratives yearn to be revealed. Behind closed doors, lives are forever altered, their destinies shattered by the persistent grip of systemic abuses. Pakistan, a land of resilience and contradictions, stands at the crossroads of history, where the actions of both civilian and military regimes have left an indelible mark on the lives of its people. Through this transformative documentary, we embark on a journey that unravels the intricate tapestry of human rights violations since April 2022, perpetrated by those entrusted with the solemn duty to safeguard the rights and dignity of the citizens. Within the depths of secrecy, we encounter narratives that demand to be heard. Behind every closed door, another voice emerges, illuminating the path towards justice. With unwavering courage, we lend our ears to the testimonies of survivors who have witnessed unspeakable atrocities. Their collective stories expose the harsh reality of human rights violations, revealing a panorama of suffering inflicted upon the people of Pakistan. Amidst this turbulent landscape, it is the marginalized and vulnerable who bear the brunt of oppression. Women, religious and ethnic minorities, journalists and activists find themselves caught in the crosshairs of injustice, their voices muffled by systemic discrimination. Enforced disappearances continue to be a significant human rights concern in Pakistan, tarnishing its international reputation. The United Nations Human Rights Council's Universal Periodic Review Working Group recently reviewed Pakistan's human rights record and highlighted the issue of enforced disappearances as a key area needing improvement. Enforced disappearance refers to the arrest, detention or abduction of individuals by state agents or groups acting with state authorization followed by a refusal to acknowledge their detention or concealment of their whereabouts. Despite the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance being in force for over a decade, Pakistan has yet to ratify it. Enforced disappearances violate fundamental rights guaranteed by international human rights treaties, including the right to liberty and security of person. They remove victims from legal protection and make them vulnerable to further abuses such as custodial torture and forced confessions. Pakistan has claimed to be taking steps to address enforced disappearances, including the establishment of the Commission of Inquiry on Enforced Disappearances and the proposed criminalization of such acts. However, these efforts have been criticized for their lack of effectiveness. The Commission has been unable to fulfill its duties, and the state's existing laws against kidnapping and false imprisonment should already cover enforced disappearances. Enforced disappearances have been a grave and ongoing issue in Pakistan, with individuals from various backgrounds being forcibly disappeared. The Commission of Inquiry of Enforced Disappearances was established in 2011 to address the issue, but the reported numbers of missing persons are considered to be significantly lower than the actual figures. Baloch and Pashtun ethnicities have been particularly targeted, with over 5,000 Pashtuns and approximately 6,500 Baloch individuals still missing. However, the lack of awareness about reporting procedures and restrictions imposed by security agencies hinders efforts to gather accurate statistics. The Pashtun Tahafuz Movement, PTM, a rights movement, accuses Pakistani security and intelligence agencies of impeding their work and preventing them from helping those affected. Former Senator Afraziab Katak, who chaired the Human Rights Commission for Pakistan, has revealed that a special committee investigating enforced disappearances found the country's intelligence agencies, notably the Inter-Services Intelligence ISI, to be involved in these cases. Katak proposed a transparent law to bring secret service agencies under legal oversight, but received no response from the Defence Ministry. The lack of accountability and the agency's resistance to legal procedures contribute to their continued authority and impunity. Enforced disappearances constitute a severe violation of human rights and contravene international human rights conventions. These actions infringe upon fundamental rights enshrined in international human rights conventions, including the right to liberty and security of person, the prohibition of arbitrary arrest or detention, and the right to a fair trial. In the past, enforced disappearances primarily targeted individuals from Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, KPK province, and the Shia minority subjecting them to oppression and grave human rights violations. However, since April 22, a disturbing shift has occurred, 
with authorities employing these brutal tactics throughout the country. This time, they not only forcefully vanish people, but also resort to arresting them openly in broad daylight in false cases, aiming to stifle dissenting voices. The victims encompass a wide spectrum of society, including ordinary political workers, social media activists, human rights defenders, journalists, news anchor persons, and even prominent political figures. In April 2022, a significant political shift took place in Pakistan as Imran Khan's government was replaced by a coalition government led by Shabazz Sharif, comprising 13 parties. ...voted on the motion of no confidence. After a nearly 14-hour standoff between Imran Khan's ruling party and the opposition. 174 members have recorded their votes in favour of the resolution. Shibaz Sharif said Pakistan had been freed from a crisis. The swearing-in of the new government brought unexpected consequences, as fundamental human rights began to be violated ruthlessly, creating a stifling atmosphere within the country. Imran Khan, ousted from power, took to the streets, organising massive rallies where he openly criticised powerful military generals, accusing them of orchestrating his government's downfall. This unprecedented criticism did not sit well with the military, which is unaccustomed to facing criticism in Pakistan. Backed by a strong military alliance, the government initiated a crackdown not only on Imran Khan and his political party, PTI, but also on journalists, rights activists, and news media groups that dared to question the legitimacy of the new government. Prominent journalists such as Ashad Sharif, Imran Riaz Khan, Sabir Shakir, Sami Ibrahim, and others faced sedition charges in court and were labelled as traitors within their own country. News media groups encountered unseen pressures to refrain from raising questions and were coerced into aligning with the government's narrative. Pakistan's track record in safeguarding the human rights of its citizens has reached unprecedented lows. In May 2022, the right to protest was violated when hundreds of ordinary people were unjustly arrested to prevent them from participating in a march towards the capital, Islamabad. ...to hold an anti-government march to the capital where he says hundreds of thousands will gather on his call to demand fresh elections in Pakistan. The government has banned him from holding the rally and cracked down on Khan's supporters in overnight raids across the country, arresting hundreds. Additionally, the freedom of speech has been severely curtailed, with journalists being arrested and harassed on false charges. The situation has become so dire that several journalists had no choice but to flee the country in order to protect their lives. Amongst them was Arshad Sharif, who, even after leaving the country, met a tragic Ashad end Sharif in Kenya. was a top TV news anchor and critic of the powerful military establishment. He fled to Kenya earlier this year after threats to his life. Investigative journalist Arshad Sharif, who was killed in Kenya on Sunday night. Many are praising Sharif as a man who dedicated his work to ending corruption and challenging the political elite. It was well known to be highly critical of the government and military. He left Pakistan after saying he'd received death threats. Ashad's only crime was daring to question those in power, who considered themselves untouchable and unaccountable. Regrettably, the government has consistently failed to uphold the basic rights of its citizens, including the right to live peacefully. In a significant call for justice, Human Rights Watch, an international non-governmental organisation based in New York City, emphasises the urgent need for impartial investigations into allegations of torture in political cases, free from any political interference. The case of Shabazz Gill, a 42-year-old assistant professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, who returned to Pakistan and served as chief of staff for Imran Khan, sheds light on the misuse of Pakistan's sedition law, a vague and overbroad legislation inherited from the colonial era, often employed to target political opponents. Gill, along with his legal team, has made repeated claims of police torture, including the distressing use of electrocution on his genitals during his detention aimed at extracting a forced confession. Pakistan ratified the United Nations Convention Against Torture and other cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment or punishment in 2010, thereby assuming the obligation to align domestic legislation with the provisions of the treaty, particularly Articles 2 and 4. Remarkably, both the UN Committee Against Torture and the Human Rights Committee, in their concluding observations after reviewing Pakistan's adherence to the treaty in 2017, called on the country to criminalise torture under its own laws. In a thought-provoking analysis, experts assert that the Pakistani government, believed to enjoy unwavering support from the influential military establishment, operates with impunity, 
seemingly immune to legal constraints. The entire nation was jolted once again on March 8th, when Ali Bilal, known as Zila Shah, a person with disabilities, was apprehended by the police in Lahore only to be returned lifeless. A post-mortem examination revealed a distressing cause of death. Excessive bleeding resulting from severe torture and injuries allegedly inflicted during his time in police custody. Shockingly, the report confirmed that he suffered a fatal head blow and endured torture on sensitive areas of his body. Rather than addressing this alarming incident and launching a thorough investigation into the allegations of custodial torture to restore citizens' faith in the government's commitment to safeguard their rights, the government astonishingly shifted the blame for Ali Bilal's death onto former Prime Minister Imran Khan. This disheartening response underscores the gravity of the situation and raises significant concerns about the Pakistani government's dedication to upholding the fundamental rights of its people. In the wake of the arrest of former Prime Minister Imran Khan, Pakistan was engulfed in widespread and violent protests. Amidst this turbulent period, the people of Pakistan received another distressing blow to the right of free speech. Imran Riaz Khan, a senior journalist known for his work with major news networks and a substantial following on social media, was apprehended for the third time by authorities at Sialkot airport. Imran Riaz Khan had been a vocal critic of the government and openly expressed his concerns about the military's interference in politics. Despite multiple hearings conducted by the Chief Justice of the Lahore High Court in response to the application filed by Imran's legal team, the efforts to locate the missing journalist have proven largely ineffective. The law enforcement and intelligence agencies have consistently denied any knowledge of his whereabouts, employing a disconcerting pattern reminiscent of previous cases of enforced disappearances. The court orders, condemnation by human rights organisations and journalist associations, have yielded no information about his fate. Reporters Without Borders, RSF, a global organization advocating for media freedom, strongly condemned the abduction of Imran Riaz Khan and pointed to the involvement of Pakistan's spy agencies. The head of Asia Pacific at RSF, Daniel Bastard, explicitly stated that it was the country's military intelligence agencies responsible for the abduction, dismissing the notion of feigned ignorance as an inadequate response when a citizen vanishes without a trace. During the 53rd session of the UN Human Rights Council in July 2023, Pakistan received a total of 340 recommendations, emphasizing the urgent need to comply with international conventions on enforced disappearances, cease the harassment of journalists, end the crackdown on freedom of speech, and halt the targeting of political workers. Amidst the protests sparked by the arrests of Imran Khan, the situation in Pakistan escalated dramatically. State buildings and military premises were subjected to vandalism, prompting a strong response from the military and government. In the aftermath, over 10,000 individuals were arrested, with many of them not even present at the sites of violence. It appears that these arrests are part of a strategy to weaken Imran Khan and his political party. Disturbing videos have emerged, revealing how these detainees are being denied basic necessities and their fundamental rights. The only way for these individuals to secure their release from prison is by renouncing their affiliation with Imran Khan and praising the military as the saviour of the nation. Even individuals such as Yasmin Rashid, a 70-year-old cancer survivor undergoing treatment, were granted discharge by an anti-terrorism court in the Corps Commander House attack case. Yet they remain incarcerated unjustly, Ferdu Shamim Nakvi, another cancer survivor receiving treatment, is also held in prison solely due to his unwavering support for Imran Khan. Shockingly, he was not even present in the city where the attacks on military premises occurred. Unconfirmed reports have even surfaced, indicating the possibility of sexual assault against female detainees. If these reports hold true, it is not only distressing, but also a deeply alarming development. These instances shed light on the plight of those unjustly incarcerated, the manipulation of fundamental human rights as a means of control, and the distressing reports of potential sexual assault. The aftermath of the protests witnessed a concerning development as the military leadership, in collaboration with the civilian government, made a solemn commitment to establish military courts for the trial of civilians. Pakistan's Home Minister Rana Sanaullah has said that Imran Khan will have to face the military court, the charge, abetment to terrorism against army officers and the army's assets on the 9th of May. This move has been strongly condemned by Amnesty International, which asserts that trying civilians in military courts violates international law. It is viewed as an intimidation tactic intended to suppress dissent 
as the military has historically evaded accountability for its actions. The Director General of Inter-Services Public Relation confirmed in a press briefing that 102 individuals have been handed over to the powerful military for trial so far. Army Act के तहत चलाए जाने वाले मकदमात के सिलसिले में पहले से कायम शुदा स्टैंडिंग फौजी अदालतें कायम काम कर रही हैं जिसमें अब तक 102 शरपसंदों का ट्रायल किया जा रहा है और यह अमल जारी है The military court responsible for hearing cases under the Military Act is known as the Field General Court Martial It is worth noting that the president of this court is a serving military officer and the prosecution council is also a military officer this raises serious concerns about transparency and severely limits the prospects of a fair trial thereby violating one of the most crucial fundamental human rights pakistan as a signatory of the international covenant on civil and political rights iccpr is obligated to uphold the right to a fair trial article 14 of the iccpr guarantees everyone the right to a trial by a competent independent and impartial tribunal The Human Rights Committee, the authoritative international body responsible for monitoring ICCPR compliance, has expressed that the trial of civilians in military or special courts may present significant challenges to equitable, impartial, and independent administration of justice. It has further emphasized that civilian trials before military or special courts should be exceptional, justified by objective and serious reasons, and only when regular civilian courts are unable to undertake such trials. In July 2023, During the renewal deliberations of Pakistan's special status with the European Union, known as GSP+, the EU ambassador to Pakistan, Rina Kionka, voiced the concerns of EU member states regarding the alarming human rights situation in the country. The international covenant on civil and political rights, which means that Pakistan has agreed that every every person has the right to a fair and public trial in a court that is independent, impartial, and competent. and also um, has the right to uh, adequate and effective legal representation. Human Rights Watch, HRW, has also called for the immediate transfer of civilians slated to be tried in military courts to the civilian justice system. Trying civilians in military courts not only violates Pakistan's international obligations under human rights law, but also undermines due process and fair trial rights. HRW has highlighted that many individuals have been charged under vague and overly broad laws pertaining to rioting and creating threats to public order. It asserts that all those arrested solely for their political affiliation should be released immediately, with charges against them dropped. Now a momentous challenge has arisen within the justice system as multiple petitions have been filed in the Supreme Court against the establishment of military courts for trying civilians. Now among the petitioners are the former Chief Justice J.S. Khawaja and the former Law Minister This development poses a significant test for the court's ability to uphold the constitution and protect the fundamental rights of its citizens, particularly in the face of the powerful military establishment. However, the true measure of this test lies not only in the court's decision, but also in its capacity to enforce it. In a country where the rule of law is perceived to be precarious and influential forces often act with impunity, the enforcement of such a decision becomes an even greater hurdle. As we conclude, we are left with a profound understanding of the challenges faced by the people of Pakistan in their pursuit of justice and human rights. The narratives shared throughout this journey have revealed a nation grappling with systemic abuses and a struggle for accountability. Behind closed doors, the voices of survivors echo, demanding to be heard and urging us to confront the harsh reality of human rights violations in Pakistan. Enforced disappearances continue to plague the country. leaving families shattered and communities in despair. The lack of progress in addressing this issue despite promises and efforts has left a stain on Pakistan's international reputation. The failure to ratify the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance and the limited effectiveness of existing mechanisms further exacerbate the situation. The marginalized and vulnerable, including women, religious and ethnic minorities, journalists and activists, bear the brunt of these violations. their voices silenced by systemic discrimination the change in political leadership in april 2022 brought with it a wave of repression curbing the rights to protest and freedom of speech journalists activists and political opponents became targets facing arrests torture 
and even enforce disappearances. The actions of those in power revealed a concerning disregard for the principles of democracy and human rights. The situation in Pakistan calls for an urgent action to protect the human rights, ensure accountability for human rights violations, and restore freedom of speech and protest. International organizations, such as Human Rights Watch, International Federation of Journalists, and Amnesty International, have emphasized the need for impartial investigations, an end to enforced disappearances, and the immediate release of individuals arrested solely for their political affiliation. The Supreme Court of Pakistan also faces a critical test in upholding the constitution and protecting the fundamental rights of citizens. The path to justice may be arduous, but it is not impossible. It requires the collective commitment of the government, security agencies, civil society, and the international community to ensure that human rights violations are confronted and those responsible are held accountable. By embracing transparency, upholding the rule of law, and protecting the fundamental rights of all citizens, Pakistan can forge a path towards a more just and inclusive society.